Zach Wilson is a starter. Who better to break it down than Brandon Marshall? He's on PFF Sam Munson. I'm drinking wine today. Not one, but two wines. That's what I hear. That's what I see. Oh, well. Uh, happy World Cup to you and AFC Playoff Picture Breakdown. We have K-Makers for you to get you set for Sunday. defense in the land. Brock Purdy did his thing yet again, and I love seeing George Kittle get in the mix. We've got our first division champs of the 2022 season. I kind of a weak locker room, Sarah. Listen, I didn't see that footage before the show today. I went to bed well before that even happened. Ah, on a scale of one to ten, that was about a three. They need to be a little bit more excited. That's the NFC West, people. San Francisco Niners clinch it with the 21 to 13 win over the magical ride of the Seahawks last night. So the, the story was that the Niners just controlled this thing from start to finish. They jump out to a 21 3 lead within the first minute of the second half. The defense. <laughs> Suffocating, terrible. Mc McCaffrey, the new addition. I don't know, did somebody say he'd be a game changer in the NFC when he got traded there? And then someone named Stat said, no, no, he wouldn't. I don't know, just another tough 100 yard situation on the ground. And George Kittle stepping up without Debo. Who's going to step? I said Brandon Ayuk. Mea culpa. I'm sorry, I told you guys to put him in your daily fantasy lineups. I think he had like two catches for 19 yards. Not great. Kittle steps up and comes up huge for the first game of your fantasy playoffs with two touchdown grabs. But we're the show of record for Brock Purdy, right? We are we are the Purdy on. Let's party. Let's, we're the Purdy people. That's who we are. And he continued to build on the first two appearances that we saw. Uh, and beyond impressive wizard takes down the goat you think it's a little bit of luck but then this week on a short week people with a bad oblique i can't even get out of bed with a bad oblique and this is what he's doing it wasn't even just these two touchdown passes to kittle or the fact that he get this joined aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers as the only other quarterback in NFL history to post a passer rating of over 115 in each of the first two starts. It wasn't just that. It was or clinching the West, and he's out there with bubbly. I don't have bubbly. I can't win a parlay. I can't open a bottle of champagne until 2023. It was this gutsy. It's the little things. Look at this gutsy completion on third down. Okay, here he is. Block pretty. He doesn't, he, what, is he missing a rib? He's got a bad oblique. We don't even know. He's a legend out there. I mean, this is, come on, third down, throwing out of his own end zone to dig his team out of a hole. We had all these things. He's scrambling. He's doing this, and that was that scramble on third there. There's awareness to get the ball in front of the sticks before he slides down, clock sticking. That is veteran stuff. That is goat stuff. We're calling him the goat. I love it. I'm all in. I usually am not trendy. I'm usually not. It takes me a long time. I'm an I'm a old man yelling at a cloud curmudgeon when it comes to he's the hot new thing in the NFL. And I usually am more uh, prone to rooting for a guy with a second story, Ryan Tannehill and Mitchell Trubisky. I was all over Geno Smith because I like when guys get to rewrite what they've done or haven't had the opportunity to do in the league. But he's doing this thing as a rookie. Seventh rounder, you love to see it, and it wasn't what you expected to see. You expected to see it out of the Jimmy Garoppolo's of the world. Uh, and I'm, yeah, uh, on record here, more convinced than ever that the Niners can still achieve the ultimate goal of a Super Bowl win with him under center. And yes, does that maybe take away from Jimmy Garoppolo a little bit? Sure, but we are purdy people, and we are also Brandon Marshall people. So for more on this one, let's bring in my favorite guest to have on a Friday or a Monday, because there's always drama. There's always something going on, and he is an all Pro receiver, the architect of the I Am Athlete Empire, and FanDuel family member. Uh, happy almost holidays, Brandon Marshall. Thank you. Um, I don't want to start this show off on a oh, happy gosh. note, though. I, uh -oh. I want an apology. I want you to apologize to me. Okay. I don't think it was last week. Maybe it was two weeks ago. I was on the Up and Adams show, and uh, I spoke so highly of Purdy. <laughs> right. And I believe it was somebody on the Up and Adam show. Not me. OK. That said, you know what? It's too early. It's too soon. And I said, I know, Kay. I know. But let me show you these two or three things why yeah. this kid is going to be the guy. So I, I would like an apology, you know, and um, we would can you like forward. an apology or would you like me to co-sign that you were, in fact, the first person in the sports world to say Brock Purdy's the real deal? Do I owe Both. you an apology or do I just owe you like a dap up for Both. being right about it? Both. <laughs> I don't just hand out apologies like that. And I'm never wrong. Ask my staff. Like, I don't do anything wrong. So I don't. Uh, I no, do he we... looked amazing last night. Yeah. What did you make of it? He looked amazing last night. Um, the thing that I loved the most, you know, you heard Coach talk about poise and being under control. Even Coach Shanahan after the game said, 
this rookie, I've never seen a rookie like this. He was uh, speaking highly of him. Uh, but for me, as a veteran or an old veteran, retired veteran, sitting back watching him, I loved his demeanor in the post-game interview. That says a lot. I think it was Ryan Fitzpatrick that asked him the question. I talked to you on draft day, told you my story, mm -hmm. drafted in the seventh round, you know, keep your head up. You never know what can happen. Now you get to the camp. The 49ers take you. You're mystery irrelevant. You get into camp, you light it up. You're the fourth quarterback on the roster. You had no, there was no plans for you playing No this plan. Year, but you took over. And he asked him, he said, did you ever think that you would be in this situation right now? And what was his answer? Look, I've always known I was capable. I've always envisioned leading a football team down the journey, down the path. I've always done it. Now, to, to, to say it would happen this fast, no. But to happen, absolutely. A lot of guys don't speak like that. So when we talked a couple weeks ago about, you know, the flair to Moxie and, you know, him pumping his, his, his fist, bumping heads with Trent Williams and all of his right. other guys, you know, showing his personality and his confidence. That's what we were talking about. Now those words just match what we were, we, what we've been seeing the last three weeks. So they're winning the Super Bowl. They're not. They're not winning the Super Bowl. Um, they're they're contenders. They'll they'll probably be in the NFC Championship. I, I like I like the Philadelphia Eagles. I like the Dallas Cowboys. K. Um, you know, those three teams. And I also like the Commanders. I think the Commanders could be the what? 2005 Whoa. Pittsburgh Steelers. They didn't got seven and five. And then all of a sudden, they go into your place, Chicago Soldier Field. They whoop up on the Bears. And then they go on this legendary run. And then they find themselves in the Super Bowls against the Seattle Seahawks. Wow. And they win this, the Super Bowl. I say that because there's always one dark horse every year. One team that we never thought would do it, the Cincinnati Bengals. Did we think the Cincinnati Bengals would be in the Super Bowl last year? So in the NFC, those are the four teams that I like. I'm not saying the commanders are as good as the other teams, but it's about who's going to get hot right now. So the Dallas Cowboys, could this be the year? We've been talking about this for 25 years, Kay. Could this be the year? Can you imagine a world where the, the Cowboys are coming off the Super Bowl? What the hell is going to happen to the sports airways then? It's true. I'm still stuck on, I'm just reveling in the clickbait that you just gave me. And Taylor, few for social, saying that the commanders are going to win the Super Bowl. I love you for that. I love you for that. <laughs> Send it out, clip it, download it on Premiere or Snippet or whatever. So what is it called? Yeah. Premiere, great. We got, we got it. Put it out there. Brandon Marshall says the commanders are in the Super Bowl. That's all. And I'm done. I'm actually good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign off for the week, and that'll be my... All right, guys. My job is done Your here. job is done. Bet the, bet, uh, bet, bet, the over, bet the over on Zach Wilson. Okay, yeah. Zach Wilson, I heard that okay, he gets no, let's the start. Go. Hold on. Can I, can I just... <laughs> I've asked, we're eight minutes in and I've asked one question and it's, and it's are, can, the, can the Niners in the Super Bowl? Obviously, I'm going to get to Zach Wilson. Give me a minute here. I do want to bring up something because we're going to talk about these quarterback situations. I thought it was interesting. Uh, Kyle Shanahan last night in the presser called Brock Purdy, quote, the most poised rookie he's ever had. So obviously, RG3, uh, Johnny Manziel, you can count those, but Trey Lance is the real, the real thought that comes up there. What does that mean for Trey Lance that he's even saying that in, uh, for the Niners in their future? Yeah, so, and I think Kirk Cousins, right? They had Kirk as yeah. a rookie as well, so you can throw him out there. Um, they had Jay Cutler. The Shanahan's had Jay Cutler. I know uh, Coach Shanahan wasn't there, but they talk every day, him and his pops, Mike Shanahan. I would say this. I would say the same thing I said last week on uh, I Am Athlete Tonight, right? This is the guy. Mm. It is what it is. Like, he is the guy, you know? Um, sometimes it may take, you know, six months. Sometimes it may take four to five years for you to really, you know, learn that this is the guy. And sometimes lightning strike in a bottle, okay? Sometimes right. you just see it. You can just see a guy's body language, right? Like, when I was a rookie, and I'm not, I'm not trying to turn this into me, but Tam Bailey went up to Coach Shanahan and said, no, Coach, he's not a tight end, he's a wide receiver. Wide receiver, he is the guy, right? You just see it. You just see it. He is it. He's throwing it like Patrick Mahomes. Like, do you see how he, he, he plays around with the football? So that's one. Two, do you see how he's making plays? Now, he had one bonehead play last night mm -hmm. where – uh, it should have been picked off. He threw the ball down the middle. It was a terrible throw. It was a terrible decision. But outside of that, the guy was flawless. 
He was flawless. And then he also missed uh, Christian McCaffrey in the flat. The ball was a little high, but he had a, a defender in his face. Yeah. So I think that's that's what really caused that. It sounds that. like you're saying this is Purdy's team. It sounds like you're saying. Yeah, and, and Trey Lance, listen, it's okay. There's 31 other teams. And I know, you know, those other teams have quarterbacks. But, like, and I like Trey Lance. Trey Lance has significant upside. He really does. But right now, this guy, come on, we're, give me a flaw, okay? Maybe he's maybe he's not maybe he's not six five. That's the is that the only flaw? I don't know if it's flaw. I just don't know how much credit he deserves versus Shanahan and company and the system and all of that. That you could tell me because right. I think everyone's it's making pain. it about Brock Purdy and not and not m about how this coaching staff has a rotation of quarterbacks, a revolving door, and somehow everyone's still picking them to represent the NFC. It's very impressive. Well, I would say this: if it was all about everybody else, then they would never had flirted with Tom Brady and all these other quarterbacks. They would have sat, they would sat there with Jimmy Facts. Garoppolo. Look at Jimmy Garoppolo's record. Look at the, the success they've had with Jimmy Garoppolo. So if it was all about, you know, we can plug and play at the quarterback position, then why are we trying, why do we, why do we give up so much to go get Trey Lance? Why do you drop, why, why, why don't you, why don't you keep all of that power that you had and those assets that you had yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and go built around, yeah. You know, everyone else, whether it was Garoppolo or that defense, strengthen the, the linebacker position or whatever you, you could have done. But they didn't do that. They didn't well, do that. Why? Because it's still a quarterback driven league. Point blank period. A wide receiver to think that we make everything go in practice and on Sundays. I'm telling you, yeah. it's a it's a quarterback driven league. A guy like that is who you need to go over the top. Because if you go back to the Super Bowl for the 49ers, K, Jimmy Garoppolo. He did his job, but he didn't make the play. I, That's but, what you but, want. But you, but you, okay, see, now I was all in on Brock Purdy, but now you're asking for it because you're crowning him in two starts. You, Hall of Jimmy Famer. Garoppolo, Hall I'm of just playing, I'm just playing, I'm just, got, I'm just playing. Brandon Marshall, Brock Purdy, Hall no. of Famer. Send it, Taylor. Send it on Twitter. Oh, no, Taylor, uh, don't do that. Taylor. I'll say, I'll say this. You're saying it, buddy. I don't know. Like, I'm, listen, I'm just a vehicle for you. Uh, I will say. He's two starts. You're not going to sell me in two starts that he that the, the future of the team is his. And you're not going to sell me that when it comes to the NFC Championship game or when it comes to the Super Bowl that he's going to make the play that Jimmy Garoppolo can't make. Yeah, we know Jimmy Garoppolo failed. Do we know that Brock Purdy is going to succeed? I think it's a little too early. Two starts is a little... Now, this can't go on Twitter because I like Brock Purdy, but I'm just pushing back on you. That would be... You're, you asked me for the argument. You asked me for the flaw. Let's say there's no flaw, but there's not a big enough sample size to, to say that he's going to be able to do it. Listen, sometimes you know you when you when you know you know. Okay, <laughs> I don't know your situation. I don't know your dating situation. Kay. I have flowers. All I what do you is, mean? All I know is and oh oh oh. oh do, you, do we want to talk about it? No. When you seen him, when you seen him, or wh whoever. When right? I see him, yes, <laughs> got it. <laughs> Go when ahead. you seen him. Your heart just like it just started to flutter a little bit, didn't it, Kay? Yes. It fluttered. My heart flutters. Yeah. And then he looked in your eyes. He looked in your eyes. Look, look, look! You're turning red right now. That's what Brock Purdy is doing to everybody in San Francisco, <laughs> and it started Can I trending. Wine, please. <laughs> sometimes you just know. I don't well, want to hear about two what weeks. What does it mean? Sometimes you just know. You trade. You traded up and hemorrhaged your entire uh, draft process to reach for a guy named Trey Lance, and then you grab a seventh rounder. But they just knew. It doesn't make any sense. Let me ask you one more question, Don't and then we'll get about back to sports. About my love life, absolutely not. Yes, yes. Don't Let me ask you one more question, then we move on. Like, she's she's wildly uncomfortable. She's trying to compose herself. Do you believe in love at first sight? Yes or no? Love at first sight? No. Yes. You don't? No. Okay, see, then that's the problem. See, then it's, we need to move on to maybe Zach Wilson or somebody else right now. <laughs> don't believe okay, I let's mean, do it. That's, and that's okay. That's okay. Like, you want to see, you want to see it, you want to see somebody put in the work over time. And well, I'm look the type at Geno Smith on the other side. Geno Smith wasn't love at first sight. It was maybe this guy's good, then he didn't have a good time, wasn't a perfect situation. It's all about opportunity situation. That's all That's all it is. And then he goes to Seattle, and they're having a magic ride. Let's talk about your Jets. The Jets, Mike F. and White, 
that's love at first sight. All of the Jets are, we're going to the Super Bowl. We're winning the thing for the first time since the 60s. We're going. We're making out. And no, now you're back to Zach Wilson. So uh, how big of a difference is this going to make in the playoff hopes? Because it's breaking news from Schefter. Mike White can't be cleared before the game. They've got the Lions. They've got the Lions in New York. And before you answer, and the question is going to be, how does this impact their chances of getting in the playoffs? Just a handful of games left. And ooh, let's pull up the playoff picture uh, for... Let's go with playoff picture first. All right, so here's what we're looking at here. They're in a tie, right? They've got a whole thing going on with the Chargers. They're in the hunt. They want to get in. Every game matters. The Lions aren't an easy out. And then you look at their schedule the rest of the way. So take a look at the Jets. They've got the Lions, I believe, uh, at home. And then what do we Oh, do we have the schedule? We don't have it? Okay, that's okay. Uh, playoff chances, what do you got? Okay, so let's before we get to the playoff chances, say this, and here's my phone uh -oh. checking up again somebody's calling me somebody needs something but here you go Who? taylor taylor yeah. be ready to click be ready to clip uh -oh. this and Ta put this out on <laughs> twitter and instagram all right 20 for 25 he'll throw for 230 yards we so take the over take the over this is a this could be a four leg parlay or okay. this could be a three leg parlay you know take 25 bucks to 100 bucks all right zach wilson he will throw for over 230 yards, he would throw more than one touchdown. Okay, so I'm looking at. I, I really think he's going. He's going. It's going to be two touchdowns, zero interceptions, and in the third leg of the parlay, he won't be benched. Okay, so that's your three leg parlay. Go to FanDuel right now, and I'm telling you, you'll make a lot of money. Put hundred dollars down, you may make seven hundred dollars. Okay, so you clip that, and then basically, I'm saying off to say this, Kay. Sometimes you need to be sat down as an athlete. Sometimes yes. when, you are the, when, you, when you are the man on campus, sometimes you have the big head, and then you come into the big city. The big city don't care about nobody, Kay. And, and you act that way, oh, you get slapped with some humility. It, it's the perfect dose sometimes for the perfect person to say, you know what, let me get my stuff together and let me go back out there. Because what we do know about Zach is, Zach can make every single throw on the field. What we do know about Zach is he is extremely intelligent and extremely smart. What we do know about Zach is there, at one point he was love in that organization. So now, is it going to be hard for him to, to rally the troops? It's going to be hard for him to, 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 to take back the team? Absolutely. But if you go out there and you're, you got the Jets sitting at what? We were seven and five right now. You're asking the question about the playoff pitchers. Can they make the playoffs or not? If you can go out there and get this win, and then you can buy yourself a little bit of time mm -hmm. and win the next game, and then potentially Let's see the be on the threshold of going into the playoffs, it's your team again. You mean to tell me we can't win in Duval? Hey, Seattle's tough, the 12th man. But you go out there and you duel it with the ex quarterback, ex Jets quarterback, Geno Smith, and you beat him. Miami's going to be tough, but it's a divisional foe. If you can, if you can go out there and have a successful outing, it's your team again. It's your team again. So can the Jets make the playoffs? Uh, I'm not going to go out there and give Taylor any clickbait right now. Okay, I don't know. Let me see this game Taylor, because it is a big deal space. that Mike White. It is a big deal that Mike White is not playing. Okay, I need to see what Zach does this game. I had as a question. I was talking to my producer before, and I said I think that. Brandon's going to be this happened like this news happened right before the show and I said I think Brandon might be negative on Zach Wilson and so mm. I'm ready to I need to combat that I would think that I, my question for Brandon would be uh, if and I was trying to be positive as I always try to be sitting your your butt on the bench for three weeks makes you think makes you grow is there a world That's where he's right. grown in those three weeks I'm happy to see that we agree on something for once uh, but how does it affect that locker room you had a bunch of dudes yeah. Will Parks released by the team yesterday. Will Parks saying, that's my quarterback, Mike White. They're wearing the Adam Banks, uh, Coach Bombay, um, Mighty Duck stuff to the Vikings right. game the other week. Like, there, CJ Uzama is Wilson's boy, but then he's my, like, isn't that, the awkwardness of that isn't going to, you know, and in, in, with the mounting pressure of winning and making the playoffs, what happens there? Hey, listen, this is the big leagues. Hey, this is the big leagues. This is what comes with it, Right. You know how you know how tough that is dropping a ball, your third down or fourth down. Hell, I dropped a game-winning touchdown two times in my 13 years, and then walking back to the sideline. You got 70,000 people live watching you walk back to the sideline. You got a couple million zoomed in on you that's watching 
on television, that's a tough thing. Zach Wilson bench in the biggest media market in the world, and all the cameras is on him with a hoodie on. Right? Do you know how tough it is for him to be standing on the side mm-hmm. during the last couple of weeks? It's tough, mm-hmm. right? But at the end of the day, you know, when there's a if you have something in you that's yeah. like, you know what, I'm not always gonna point the finger. I'm gonna try to see, take responsibility for what I've contributed to it and try to get better. This could be a good situation for him. It was good for me in Denver when Jay Cutler publicly down there denounced me. I don't know how much longer we can keep up with Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall, listen, if he keep doing this. We might have to trade him or cut him. Yeah. And I go to him in the locker room like, dang, bro, you'll say that publicly against me? He said, look, you need to get it. And that's how he looked at me. Rod Smith looked at me and said, you need to get it. Okay. Uh, Brian Dawkins looked at me and said, you need to get it. Chan Bailey looked at me and just gave me an eye like, come on, kid. Elvis Duvermill, my brother, he loved on those me. Those are veterans. But he said, come on. Brandon, those are veterans. Who do you got? Braxton Berrios is walking up to Zach Wilson and saying, let's get it. CJ Will- CJ Uzama, new to that team this year. He's the only guy that I would think, I'm trying to think, on offense that would go and have that sort of conversation. It comes down to Coach Sala and what he has to say. And trust me, if I'm benched for three weeks for Mike F. and White, Sala could tell me that I'm the best thing that's ever happened and he's got all the faith in me. I'm not believing in him. So that voids itself. I don't know what Sala could possibly say to me if I'm a quarterback that gets benched. And the only reason I'm going in is because the other quarterback y'all fell in love with was not cleared to play. So what you're saying is, in my opinion, so dead on, though. It's do you have something in you? Do you have that thing in you that says, I don't care what Sala says. This isn't about Sala. I don't care what CJ Uzama Brack. It's got to be on you. Like, you at least had veterans. Zach does not have that. And Zach's in New York. And Zach's got pressure. And this is week 15. This is no yep. joke. He's got to have it in him if he's going to have that type of performance. Right. I've never seen in the NFL him have that in him. So I'm worried. Yeah, but it's, but, but Kay is all of that. It's not just Sala. It's not just the guys in the locker room. You don't think he's going to hear this clip of you and I or see a tweet? Taylor's going to retweet this. You don't think you don't, is it Taylor or Tyler? What's, what is it? Taylor Fuse. Say so we love Taylor Few. Taylor Fuse is doing a kick kick ass job. Woo-hoo! Okay, with y'all social, y'all you guys are going viral all the time. Good job. Keep it up. Thank you, but, Brandon. But but as players, okay, we see everything. Don't believe that. Oh, I don't read the clippings. I don't hear anything. Yeah. I got my head down, no distraction. So him seeing his name smear. And talked to, and him talked about over the last three, four weeks uh-huh. on ESPN, on the FanDuel Did Network. Did it work with on- Sam Darnold? Tell me this. Did Sam Darnold? I mean, Sam Darnold was on every back page of New York. He had all the talent in the world. I heard about Sam Darnold when he was a freshman in high school, how good he was going to be in the NFL. Right. Gets drafted to that organization. Obviously, different circumstances, different players good on the question. field personnel, different head coach. But you cannot tell. Darnold did not. Have, you can't tell me every quarterback that's highly drafted and highly, highly regarded has some switch in them that they can perform when they've been some guys will see this clip and fold and that might be zach wilson right Right. listen great 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 uh question right i got three kids two boys when my 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 oldest son z was turning eight tomorrow when he was just two years old we seen the competitive nature in him he would cry when he would lose or couldn't get something right and my wife would say you know what oh baby you can't act like that you can't respond i said no 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 let that chill for a Got little it. bit. I need that to develop in him because I would rather have a kid that that has this attitude, this flair, this moxie, and some other little edginess about him and bring them down, teach them how to come down, then take a kid like Sam Darnold, and I got to give you juice. Yeah. That's the difference. The reason why I love Zach when we went to go get him in a draft is because it's a big city. And to make it in New York City, and you know this, Kay, you was there for a very long time. Mm-hmm. You got to have some oomph about you. OK, so this kid has this edge about him that he can deal with it. He got the thick skin. Now all we got to do is just bring it down a little bit. Yeah. Hey, buddy, it's not just about you in the locker room. Right. Hey, buddy, make sure you're building relationships. Bring it down a little bit. Here's my, yeah, but, we got to take a break. My last thing is. What? The, a break? The, unfortunately. Uh, I have to, we'll be back, though. I, I want to talk about Odell and everything. I will say this last thing. The solid part of it's interesting to me. Because I do. Th- you have to have something in you. you got to do it for yourself. And there's... N- I don't know what Sala could do to get the... Comp- you know what he could do? Because I'm thinking, like, what could Sala do to show... I think Zach Wilson is someone that needs confidence. I think someone that needs to be... No, needs, he I already did it, okay? He already did it. He pinched him. Okay, 
I think play calling. I want this is here's what I want to see out of Salah. I want to see play calling first quarter at home crowd Lions feisty run through a wall for Dan Campbell Lions. I want to see you let Zach Wilson air it out in the first quarter. Mm, That's what I, like I want. It. I like it. That's is that why a you good take idea? Because like, you're thinking you're you Salah. How do you do it? Let him let him air it out. Let him show him. Don't tell him. Nothing you say is going to work. I don't think. You benched me for three weeks. You air it out, and you dial up some plays and let me show you what I can do. And that's really, to me, the only way this will work. The best thing you've ever said. The best thing you said in the last 30 seconds. <laughs> Brandon Marshall joining us after the break. I mean, that was like 75. You're, you're making, you like Taylor, but you're making her job real hard this morning. Poor Taylor wants to mail it in on a Friday, and she's like, <laughs> we'll be back. Back with Brandon Marshall. Hi, Brandon. <laughs> hey, Taylor, you can't tweet that so fast. I said they could make this Super Bowl. Brandon she Marshall just said the commanders are going to win this. Let me just really quickly re make sure that's retweeted so everyone can see that. Do we at the commanders? Let me text it to Ron Rivera. Ron Rivera. Oh I think Ron God. Rivera would like your, your confidence. There's a Bears connection there between the two of you. What do you think? So everybody's tuning in right now. Yeah. Um, and missed the top of the show. I said that the Commanders <laughs> could people. potentially could potentially be the 2005 Pittsburgh Steelers going this legendary run and make it to the Super There's Bowl. There's always a team. There's oh always a team. Uh, let's oh talk about, you mentioned the Cowboys. Uh, I was looking over at FanDuel Sportsbook even just yesterday. that They do have the Eagles, Marissa, as the favorite. Then they've got the Bengals way too low. The Cowboys are ahead of the Bengals, I believe. So let's talk about the addition and non-addition of Odell because the – it's not even drama. It was like something, and now it's nothing. And now you're, the, the storyline's kind of losing me. I'm, I'm bored. Uh, but the Cowboys are cooling off. That's the latest on Odell because of the injury concerns. And they signed T.Y. Hilton. And then this <laughs> week, Jerry Jones comes out and says, stand by when he was asked about Odell. So what do you think ends up happening? If, I, if, I'm, if I'm Odell or any free agent player, I'm not going to the Cowboys. I'm not going to the Cowboys until... until Jerry Jones stand up and denounce that picture that he that we talked about a couple of weeks ago, right? Um, I talked about this back in 2016. Mm -hmm. I talked about this over the last couple of years. I've always been uh, a very uh, 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 bold about my stance with Jerry Jones. Listen, a lot of guys love Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones stands up for a lot of his players and has, has done a lot for his players. But Jerry Jones... You need to show alliance to your players in these situations. You know, there's a lot of guys right now saying, why haven't you addressed this photo? So if I'm Odell Beckham Jr. and, and they handle my visit the way they did, the Giants didn't, the Buffalo Bills didn't, now you guys come out and say, oh, we're concerned about my knee? Mm. Hell, he's been hurt three out of the last four years, right? That's not good business, okay? So if I'm Odell... Like I said on this show, you go back to New York. You go back to where they know you best. You go back and, and, and you go be the guy. I never wanted Odell to leave New York. I used to sit there for, a, for like an hour or two daily when I played for the Giants. Like, come on, oh, like, come this. I, I understand. I get what you're saying from a receiver standpoint. I see it. But you're in New York. Look at your hair. Look at your whole you. This is your market. They can go get a quarterback. They can go get a coach. They can go get this and that. F figure out a way to stay here. Now, obviously, when you're younger, just like I was, you don't, you know, you got to make the decisions that's best for you at that time. Mm -hmm. And he felt like, you know, moving on was what's best for him. So he did that. But I would like Super to see Bowl. Odell Beckham Jr. back at the Giants. Yeah, he did win the Super Bowl 100%. And, and that's great. Now go. Now come back to New York. You got the Super Bowl to wait. Come get your money in New York, right? Go be the guy. Catch 100 balls next year. Be healthy. Be the next TD. TD. Remember, TD Thomas Davis had three, four knee surgeries, and his career, we said, was over, and he went on and played another eight years at an yeah, all-pro level. Yeah, but why are you playing? Aren't you playing to win a Super Bowl? So I guess my only question to you would be, can't he help the Cowboys, who you like, win a Super Bowl? No, you're not. Not every player is just playing to win the Super Bowl. You know, let's be clear there, right? It's part of it. And we have to ask every single every single player, when we have these discussions, we have to ask the players, 
why do you play the game? Mm. Some players, going back to high school football, they play just that wear the, the jersey on Friday to school. <laughs> they don't care about anything else. They just want to wear the shirt, the, the jersey. I don't know. Did you proud. see Odell when he won the Super Bowl? I don't think I need to ask him to see what his face looked know, like but, when he but, won. But, that's right, 100%. But some players do it for the money. Some pl players do it for the fame. Some players do it for the team success. Some players do it for the individual success. Some players try to do it all. I think Odell is a player that wants it all. Right, Odell's yeah. just like any of like a lot of our great players. He wants it all. He wants the Super Bowl. He wants the money. He wants the records. He wants the team success. He wants it all. Okay, you already have. You have a, you have a, a good little bank account. You have a nice bank account. You have the fame. You have the Super Bowl. Now, what you want? The, Odell Beckham Jr. We were talking about. Can he be the greatest receiver of all time? Go get your career back on track. That's why I said that. You go back to New York, they know your body. They're the teams that's willing, they're going to be the guys that's willing to say, you know, Odell, take two days, or we'll see you on Sunday. Wow. When you're in a new environment, they don't know who you are. They want to see you. They want to feel you at the top of your route. The Giants don't need to see that. They know Odell's one of the hardest working people that has ever walked through New York. Hmm. So go back out there. Danny Dimes, they need, a, they need a number one wide receiver. Go out there, bring in some more help. You can't do it all by yourself and see what happens. I think that's the question. What does Odell want? Does he want some emotional finish to his career? Then the Giants are a good spot. It can't be a ring right now, and it can't be money. Because I don't know if you've looked at the – it's a cute thing to say, go to the, their salary cap. They don't got it. They don't got what it, would, what it would potentially take if Odell really wants to get paid. The Cowboys do right now. So that's what people are discussing. But I, I, I mean, it's a storybook ending, right? He's got that tattoo of the New York skyline on his back. It makes sense. Go back to New York where you're beloved and an absolute rock star. Uh, okay, this weekend, we, I'm excited about this one. Tom Brady and Joe Burrow. They, this is the first time they've played each other, I think. Jamar Chase was asked. I want you to look at this. Did you see this? Mm, I saw it. Jamar Chase was asked <laughs> if Brady and Burrow have a similar competitive fire. And this is what he said. I don't know. I've heard stories of Tom Brady going off on people for dropping the ball. Joe don't do that, so I wouldn't want him. I would be pissy going off on me. Yeah. <laughs> what? What do you want me to say? You want, want me to give you something that Taylor can clip no. again? Like, what do you want me to say? No, I really do. I want your thoughts on Chase saying this because is this a a generational thing? Is it? I just just there's a lot of ways to unpack this, and I'm sure you're gonna unpack every way. Right. So go for it. No, it's the number one wide receiver thing. You think Peyton Manning was able to talk to Reggie Wayne that way? One of our very first shows on I Am Athlete, when we launched a podcast, we talked about, you know, Jay Cutler, Peyton Manning, and, and Reggie Wayne said he cussed Peyton Manning out one day. Peyton Manning tried that. He ain't never talked to Marvin Harrison that way. Mm. You think Tom Brady ever talked to Randy Moss that way? Heck no. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. Okay, you know this. You you had a legendary run with Nate Burleson, and I will say this: Nate is the sweetest the guy in the entire world. The best, right? He's he's the best. But then there's like these other wide receivers in the room that we just think a little <laughs> bit differently. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the the the, the shade! I can't handle. You're too funny. Oh my God, Brandon. Uh, okay, so <laughs> so are you saying that Mike? Evans isn't a number one wide receiver. What are you saying? Because isn't that what he's saying? That he's hearing stories about Tom Brady. Yeah, we've seen some bites of Tom, that. Tom Brady has. I, I guarantee Tom Brady has never yelled at Mike Evans, ever. And it, if he has, then Mike Evans probably looked back at him and said, "You better chill out." Right? It's just. A, it's a respect thing. And let me bring it down a little bit. It's just a respect thing, right? Because why are you gonna? Why? Why would he have to yell at Jamar Chase, right? He guys haven't yelled at Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase, you drop a ball, and then guess what? He's going to score a touchdown on the next drive. He knows he's going to bounce back. You know Mike Evans is going to bounce back. You know Tyreek Hill is going to bounce back. The other guys, you have room to do that. Like the number the number three, number four wide receivers, the scout team receivers, that's who they're taking it out on, right? Because you don't know if they're going to bounce back. And it's like, don't waste my time on this field. But they haven't the bounced back, my friend. And Mike Evans... Tom Brady's yelling at everybody out there. I, I, it's a I'm difference. asking it's a them. Difference. Can somebody find me the clip. Like, so Mike, it, no, 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 it's a Mike difference. Evans. No, no, Kate, it's a difference between, you know, coming to the sideline, taking your helmet off, throwing it down, throwing your iPad down. But when you look 
another uh, football player right. eye to eye and yell at him that way, that's a little different. But Joe right? Burrow so, would never do that. And Jamar Chase is okay. saying he's a. I prefer his leadership style, his competitive fire is not that of he's going to yell at me. Tom Brady, I don't think I'd like playing with him because I hear he yells at everyone. And he has yelled at everyone that we've seen on the field so far. And guess what? The problem is, like, what's they haven't bounced back. So what's going wrong with Tom Brady? Him and Mike Evans, I don't know what it is, but clearly not working. Yeah, well, I would say this, right? Um, sometimes it is what it is. Mm. Like, I mean, Kay, he, he, he had, a, he had what he, 20 years? A 20-year run where I mean, just dominated, right? Look at Russell Wilson. Look at uh, look at Aaron Rodgers. Some of our guys have down years. I'm not saying that it's over for him because I don't believe th that to be so. Mm. I'm just saying it's a bad year for Tampa. W look at his offensive line. Look at the receivers at the beginning of the year, the top of the year. No more tight end. No more Gronkowski. The running back position. Do you have a spark there? Right? Like there's something off there in the running game. So even defensively, they're banged up in the secondary. So it's it's more to it than just Tom Brady, okay? And I will say this, Tom. I would. Oh, I got. Oh my goodness, you guys, can Richard. Why? Can Richard. Have, can we can we roll it, please? Don't roll it. He's just yelling at everybody. I think we're probably, yeah, there's got to be not... Mike Evans. That's his competitive name. Okay. I, you know what I thought you were going to do, Brandon? I wanted to ask you this because I thought it's crazy that Jamar even said that because like I just couldn't expect him. That's not, not what you say, right? You just don't say that right. or compare. You don't take the bait and take, talk about the two quarterbacks. You just don't. You just right. don't. And then the other thing was, is it a generational thing? Because Belichick also got, gets a lot of grief for he used to change his teaching style to accommodate a younger generation that doesn't want to be treated that way and that care about feelings and care about a quieter style. So I thought you were going to take it in. The, I thought, see, I, you're, I, got, I got you all wrong. I thought you were going to come and say that Jamar, like, like, you know, that you should yell, at, be able to yell at receivers and get them on. He's great. You, you, made, you, made, you made excuses like this about Aaron Rodgers, that he's great. He's not a leader. But he's a great player, so you got to do whatever you can. Devonta, who everybody's got to take that heat from him. He's slamming. Aaron Rodgers is saying these receivers can't catch. They aren't good enough for the playbook. The playbook's too advanced for them. All the beginning of the season, and you're saying his greatness is why he can say that. Why is it different? Like, what, what are we talking about here? Yeah, great. Well, I, I, back to what we what we initially talked about. Aaron Rodgers, does he have a Tyree Kill? Does he have a Mike Evans? Does he have? You know, Justin Jefferson, he doesn't. So he can do that to young receivers. Yeah. He can do that. It's you can do that to young one. players. My thing at the beat, when we were talking about this, it was more so about can he talk directly to, you know, a chase that way. The team, absolutely. Office alignment, absolutely. Office alignment, it's all about how these different positions are wired. Office alignment, you can get after them. Right, they, they'll they'll be able to take it. Every once in a while, you'll see an offensive lineman stand up and be ticked off and pushed back. Every once in a while, we saw that with Jeff Saturday and Peyton Manning. We saw that a couple times, yeah. right? But <laughs> great clip. You got to go. Yeah, that was a great clip. I love it. But they're best <laughs> friends, and guess what? They were having a beer right after. Yeah. Right. That's so it, 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 you, you got to understand our uh, temperament as wide receivers. If you do that, oh, to, I do. You know, <laughs> if you go do that to one of the top wide receivers. The wide receiver might not talk to your butt for four weeks. <laughs> Haven't we seen? I mean, I've seen Kyler and DeAndre get into it. No, it, well, you you heard you heard DeAndre, who's also very even kill. You heard him say, "Bro, I'm like enough's enough, basically." Yeah. Right. I, come on, that's what you saw DeAndre do, Jay and Cut Kyler responded. Jay Cutler, Jay Cutler never let you have it. Oh my goodness! Yes, that's why. Our, like, that's the problem. That was the problem. Like, he should have played wide receiver. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> hey, that's amazing. Well, let me tell you. Oh God, we have to problem. go. Oh my God. The go first, ahead. the first, the first, the first couple of years, right? Like Jay, you know, he's revved up high, or you know, and and so like everybody had to take it, and I would just sit back. Oh Jay, okay Jay, Jay. But when we were playing for the Chicago Bears, I was like, man, I'm not taking this no more. I'm a man now. So I start pushing back. And then that's when we really start bumping heads is when I was like, no, you're not. Jay, no, you threw the ball wrong. <laughs> I got 100 catches. I'm doing my job. I'm I don't even know what pro. we're talking. I don't even. It sounds like you prefer 
and I know that you do, you prefer, a, you're a new school, new generation guy. You want the Ryan Fitzpatrick. You love Ryan Fitzpatrick. No, no, Ryan's, I love both. Ryan Fitzpatrick has never yelled at you. No, 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 I love both. I, I can play with, I can play with Tom Brady. I can play with Peyton Manning. I like structure. I like routine. I love that. I love to be in a, a highly competitive environment. So but if you're I Tom actually, Brady, Mike Evans, as great as he is, 9,000-yard seasons, I think maybe eight, maybe he's working on his ninth. Uh, you can't get yelled at by, I mean, doesn't the GOAT, isn't the GOAT above all of that? Like, if you, if you, you who had the similar 1,000-yard season after 1,000-yard season, one of the toughest players to ever play at the wide receiver position in all pro, Tom Brady yells at you and you're like, don't yell at me, bro? Those things happen, but it's easier, it's an easier conversation, right? It's like, it's like you in, in broadcasting. You may make a mistake, right? But then let's say, like, I might come to you and be like, hey, Kay, like, did you see that? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, I'm going I'm to meet your, I'm at, I'm at your level. This is a bad example. Let me move on. This is a terrible example. Okay, we gotta I was go. to, All I, was I heard gonna, is that no, the no, commanders. No, 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 we got to go. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Gotta go. You can't, you, oh, my goodness. I love you. I am athlete is where you can hear more from Brandon Marshall. I I'm cannot back wait tomorrow. to see you. Uh, it's tomorrow Saturday. If you want to come back, listen. I'll, I won't be here. Love you. You're the best in the Commanders. The Commanders. Super Bowl. Back, back Monday. You should have, back I, Monday. I, every Friday we do this, I tell myself I should ask, this is a humble, I should text Sugar Ray Leonard and see if he'll come on the show and do the K-Maker segment with me because he's one of the loveliest people I've ever met and that I've worked with. Somebody remind me for next week, would you? All right, here's some K-Makers. You need players to find the end zone for fantasy, for daily fantasy, for FanDuel Sportsbook, prop bettage. Uh, your needs are covered right here on the Up and Adams Show. These are guys I think will score touchdowns. Uh, let's do it. Derek Henry uh, at the Los Angeles Chargers. Going to this game. Sorry, Chargers, but I think he scores in this one because the Chargers have the second worst run defense in the entire National Football League. I also like J.K. Dobbins against the Browns. You know I like J.K. Dobbins because I talk about him on the show constantly. Browns have given up the second most touchdowns to running backs this year. It just makes sense. When you get to week 15 and those are the numbers, anything in the top five against touchdowns, your guy's going to score a touchdown. We have enough of a sample size here. And A.J. Brown uh, is visiting Chicago. Oh, boy. Uh, and he's been on a tear. I do believe Chicago's super banged up defensively. So I hope this isn't a trap game for your Eagles. Marissa, AJ Brown, I think, scores a touchdown. So receiver scoring and a couple of running backs will be back on the Up and Adam show with no time because Brandon Marshall just comes on here and does filibusters. Mr. Marshall goes to Washington. Each and every Friday, I drink coffee and alcohol. We have a little power hour sponsored and powered by PFF. Not really sponsored. We just really like PFF's information because it's the best. And if you're playing fantasy football or if you are hanging out over at FanDuel Sportsbook, don't even dare. Like, it would be stupid and frankly irresponsible to do it without checking out the new brand spanking new PFF app. I use it. Uh, I'm thinking of, dip, you know, I, get, I grounded myself from the parlay world, Sam. I'm thinking I'm going to dabble for a Saturday Night Dolphins Bills thing. Stay tuned for that. But Sam okay. Munson is here because I will not put a parlay thing out without checking and double checking with what's going on uh, over at the PFF app. So here's what we do. First of all, World Cup final. What do you got? Mm -hmm. um, France. Got to be France. I think France have been the best team in it this year. And as much as it might ruin Leo Messi's, you know, World Cup career yeah. life, I think France are going to be the team. But him being in the final is already good for his career because it was always just he can't do anything with Argentina, the national team. So, okay, for, so in honor of you, I'll drink French wine from Mbappe. I believe this is okay. a, what is this? A rosé. A rosé. And then we have, you guys aren't going to show more of the homers. But I'll also drink this because I'm greedy. Nice. And well I want equally yeah. support. So let me see. Nice room temperature rosé. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's delicious. So I think Argentina is winning. What are you drinking, my friend? Uh, we have, what have we got here? Sapporo. Oh, Ooh, so you love way? a Sapporo. Or you just like bought a six pack week one and then don't drink it other than on the show. Either way, let's go through some numbers that are making <laughs> NFL fans say, man, that is PFF'd up. Playoff picture is very important. These numbers are important. Uh, someone once told me it's a game of inches. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but the first number is 56. That sounds like the number of adult beverages that Taylor Few, Marissa McBride, and myself will drink at the Chargers-Titans game this weekend. Reasonable over-under. This is Tua Tugavailoa's PFF grade over the last two weeks, whilst this blueprint to stop mm. Miami has been out. It's dropped from around 90. He was right up there with Patrick Mahomes, with Josh Allen, 
with the best graded quarterbacks in the NFL right up until the last two weeks. Now we've got this uh, blueprint out to stop Miami and Tua is definitely not holding up his end of the bargain relative to earlier in the season. Can I tell you something also that's awful? 0-2, Tua, 0-2 in Buffalo. And I believe he's thrown four interceptions to one touchdown in those games. Not good. Not good for that game, but maybe uh, I only know that because I'm crunching the numbers for my parlay. Okay, uh, the number is 40.1. No idea. Is that the temperature in LA that everyone says is so beautiful? Because it's certainly not. <laughs> no, that is the pressure rate for the Philadelphia Eagles defense this season. They just overtook um, the top spot in the NFL. I think they jumped Dallas for that top spot. This is the best defense in the NFL in terms of generating pressure this season. And it's one of the big reasons why I think Philadelphia is a legit Super Bowl contender from the NFC, because the offense is great. They're going to get Dallas Goddard back, but the defense has been so good as well. Incredible depth up front and those two corners locking things down on the back end. Eagles lead the league with 49 sacks. You'd love to see it. How about the number 0.8? Uh, that's the number of my battery power on my laptop every morning I come <laughs> into the studio. It's true. It's really Can't cool. be those people. Can't be one of those I, people. I, I'm the spokesperson for those people. Hurry, let's get through these. That's the average yardage before contact that the Tennessee Titans have generated this season. Worst in the NFL. When they have rushing success, it's Derrick Henry getting it done basically by himself. Uh, one more for you. Last one quickly. The number 104. I think that's the age that I felt by the time I left the Avatar movie. Yeah, that's the number of penalties that the Denver offense has had this season. So even penalties has been going badly for that Denver offense. Just nothing has worked for that team this season. Nothing has worked for that team this season. Uh, listen, it's hard to score points when you have that many penalties, but it's a good reason that, that they're only uh, averaging 14.9 points per game. 14.9 is dead last in the National Football League. Go get the PFF app, Sam Munson. I appreciate you. I hope you drink that whole Sapporo. Don't put that thing in the drain. So I'm much on, waste in this world. All right, big sports weekend, everybody. Be great. Uh, drink responsibly, please. Ubers and all. If you see us at the Titans Chargers game, say hello. If anybody wants to date Conrad, I'm taking applications and they're under review. We'll see you. Enjoy World Cup action. Why did I say that? I don't know.